Welcome back to another episode in this Blender Modifiers series. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Cast modifier. So to start off with, just added in a cylinder and we're just going to rotate the cylinder on the Y axis by 90 degrees. Change Transform Orientation to Global and Scale on the X axis, just to make it a bit longer. And we're going to apply those transforms. We're also going to duplicate this with Shift D and then scale this down and scale in the X. So now we have something like this. I'm actually going to make this a bit smaller and longer in the X. So something like this. So along with the cast modifier, we're also going to combine this with Boolean, which we talked about in the last video. So select our big cylinder here, go to the modifiers, add a modifier, Boolean, object, uh, this one, difference, and then we can hide the second cylinder here. Now we have something like this. Uh, next, I'm going to add in a UV sphere. I'm just going to drag this out here and we're going to scale this down a little something like that so you can see here the uv sphere is actually larger than the hole inside this cylinder now the really cool thing about the cast modifier is it will allow us to bend and warp our geometry according to our object which we are selecting it to so what i'd like to do we're just going to bring this to about the middle point we are going to hit i to add in a location keyframe and let's bring this to about 60 here and we're just going to move this to an end point hit i again and add in a location keyframe so now if we go back to our beginning of our playhead and click play you can see our little uv sphere is just moving from one point to the end we're going to right click in our timeline here both keyframes are selected and we're just going to go to interpolation mode set that to exponential and you can see it starts off slow and gets quicker as it gets to the end and we're actually just going to grab this keyframe here and we're just going to move this back something like that we're going to click on our big cylinder here let's just apply this boolean and in modifier come down to deform and select the cast option here now what we want to do is in our object eyedropper click on this sphere here now if we go ahead and hit play with the spacebar you can see what that's doing it's deforming our mesh around our selected object here it's almost like a cartoon cannon effect we're getting but what i'd actually like to do is i'm just going to get rid of that cast really quick tab into edit mode and with Control r and our scroll wheel add in a few loop cuts here press enter to select that tab back into our normal view and re-add that cast and with our object eyedropper select that sphere and now you can see it's deforming more because we've added in those loop cuts way more fluid than it was previously so now we've got this little animation going Let's actually get this conformed to our sphere correctly. Currently it's blowing out and looks massive. Uh, so let's take a look at our options here. In our modifiers tab, underneath our shape, which is currently set to sphere, we have our axes, X, Y, and Z. And if we turn off X, turn off Y, turn off Z, it's not gonna do anything. Let's turn X back on and see what that does. And you can see it's almost sliding to the left and right there on our x axis which is our red one here we don't really want that to happen so let's deselect that and try y now you can see our y axis here by the green you can see that's going to deform to the left and the right but nothing in our z coordinate which is up and down so let's select that and now we're getting that effect that we really want it's deforming to the sphere but it's not moving it left and right so we've deselected the x axis here uh, but it's still a bit too large so underneath that we have our factor and you can see what factor is doing. If we bring that down, it's going to go in the opposite direction. And it's going to intersect mesh. It's going to look awful. Uh, that's too far. Uh, if we go too wide, you can see it's really spreading out. And uh, it's going crazy again by intersecting our mesh. And we don't want it to be that large. So let's bring this back. Again, we, we can just play with this uh, to get this how we want. Uh, so that's 0 0.09. Let's do 0 0.9. Two, and that's a bit more of what we want still cartoony but it's not massive as it was previously and underneath our factor we have radius now if we change our radius up it's zero by default only the factor is going to be affecting this but if we increase our radius you can see what we get we get a finer control of our total cast effect here so I bring that down to like 1.9 and you can see what that's doing with our mesh here not only is it conformed pretty closely to the ball shape but now it's actually bringing our mesh shape back to its original you can see that here the ball has left our factor on zero it's left it wide open uh, but we bring that radius up and it's gone back to our standard shape for what we had before and lastly we have size now currently 
it's not going to do anything if we change this because we're getting our size from our radius but we can deselect that once we do you can see it has changed how our radius has affected the mesh we've got our radius but maybe we want a different size so we can deselect size from radius you can see our radius here and affect our size however we want so we can control those individually if we want uh, but for now i'm just going to leave that on size th from radius as it works quite well for what we're doing here so with our vertex group here what we're going to do is tab into edit mode with our cylinder and we're just going to select some vertices with with the number one key let's go into vertex select and uh, number one on the numpad go into wireframe mode and i'm just going to select these end vertices here now you can press Control g to assign to a new vertex group or go to vertex at the top and vertex group assigned to new group and if we look at our scene collection on the right here underneath cylinder we have vertex groups so we're going to tab back into our standard view and take it off wireframe mode and under vertex group select our group now when we hit play you can see the only part of the mesh that's going to deform and change is the part that we selected for our vertex group so this will allow you to be really creative in your animation as always with these videos it depends on what project you're making and what kind of effect you're trying to achieve but with the vertex groups, it allows you to control certain vertexes throughout your mesh rather than deforming the entire mesh itself. And that's it for the vertex group. Uh, straightforward, just, you know, grab some vertexes, add them to a group, and you'll be able to deform only that on the mesh. And lastly, underneath our object, which we've selected here, we have use transform. Uh, if you hover over that, it tells you to use object transform to control a projection shape. What I'll show you here is we go to our side view here. If we turn on use transform, you can see it's uh, it's made it a bit smaller and it's actually affected our radius and factor settings here. Personally, it would be better to control these by yourself to get the exact size that you would like rather than using uh, the object transform here. Uh, so let's just go over our shape here at the top. So currently it's set to sphere. Uh, because we are using a sphere uh, but we can also set that to cylinder uh, and you can see here when we get to the end of our animation here you can see how it's deforming differently than it would be as if we were to select sphere as it's being a perfect circle and we can also select cuboid which again will depend whatever object is inside and which you'd like it to cast it will change the deformation in a cuboid it's more square I'm just going to show you something here. We've just made a quick torus. I'm just going to add in a location keyframe here and use another location keyframe. With our torus now, um, shape is still currently set to sphere. However, it's not a perfect sphere. You can see here it doesn't quite fit. So what we can do in this instance is use our object transform and it will conform to our custom shape here. Uh, now that may be tweaking still necessary um, as our size and radius are still currently set to our previous uh, so we can increase that and our factor just a little bit as well and you can see that's now performing a custom shape rather than the sphere and just for good measure we're also going to change that interpolation mode to ex exponential so there we have our cast modifier um, it's a pretty cool modifier you can do this with a bunch of cool things and you know, mixing and matching modifiers together is what will give you some really awesome results. Uh, like here, we use the Boolean modifier uh, to cut out a hole in our cylinder. And then with the cast modifier, we can fire something out of it, almost like a cannon. Thank you very much for watching this new video here. And if you liked the video, leave a like. If you have not subscribed, but you'd like to know when I upload a new video, click the subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell to know exactly when I do upload. And I don't make any money off this YouTube channel. So if you would like to support the channel, and support me with these videos you can check out patreon in the link down below and you're not just supporting this channel but you also get some some cool stuff There's some blend files for previous projects i've made uh, some shaders you get some cool stuff and you get complete access to all previous projects that i've worked on uh, some really cool shaders like this uh, clay animated clay shader here pill simulations and even that really nasty meat and flesh trypophobic material that i made so again thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next in the modifiers series and I'll catch you in the next one.